And again, it's always a pleasure to be here at Cable 2, especially on the Fairhaven and Cushioning Magazine portion. Um, I enjoy the interviews. I uh, meet some very interesting people, and I hope it will, will continue on. Uh, but indeed, we do have a very interesting guest here this evening, uh, certainly no stranger to me personally, and uh, is quite well known locally now, uh, been involved in the militia activities and whatever. And I refer to uh, Arthur, Arthur Fortier, uh, better known uh, in various quarters as Woody. He's always referred to as Woody, a very clever man, um, a good strong artisan, a master tool and die maker, and the whole nine yards. And I'm going to uh, immediately uh, take advantage of the time and uh, welcome to the program, uh, Woody. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here this evening. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's go back and uh, for those that don't, un don't know where you came from or what you do or, or what you've done, accomplished, uh, let, let's go back to 1918 and that's the year you were born, am I correct? Correct. Where? Where were you born? I was born in New Bedford. In New Bedford. Nin uh, May 10, 1918. Yeah, uh, what, what, what type of a family did you come from? Uh, oh, from a large family, and a uh, it was a, a poor family. A poor family, a working, working man's family? Oh, yes, and we all worked hard to, to strive to survive. I know you have a very, very interesting background, and uh, say you work very closely, as I understand, with the chief engineer on the first twin helicopter right here in New Bedford, is that correct? Correct. That is a very interesting point, and I think it's certainly worthwhile covering that, so why don't you, let's jump in on that, and, and what's your recollections of that uh, at this point? Well, uh, I had uh, worked for the Kushner Company for quite a while. Then I uh, went out to California, San Diego, to try my experience in aircraft again. So I worked for uh, Convair Aircraft, which was called the Consolidated Vaulty Aircraft. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a tool and die maker there. So uh, at that time, we were building the F-102 fighter planes, which was top secret. Was it for the Army or? Uh, this was for the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And um, I also worked on the pogo stick, tooling for the pogo stick. What's a pogo stick? Now, the pogo stick is an aircraft that doesn't fly, it doesn't take off vertical. It's, I mean, horizontal, vertical. It oh, takes okay. off vertical, straight up. I've seen some prototypes of that. And when it lands, it lands up back on its really? tail. Apparently, it didn't work <laughs> out because I haven't seen too many of them. Uh, well, it, it, it was a good idea, but it was not too practical mm -hmm. because of... Uh, you had to be well, quite. What, what role did you play in that helicopter? That's in the helicopter. I was a tool and die maker in that, and also I was connected with the chief engineer, which mm -hmm. was with Bernard Snitzer. He was the president of the company, mm -hmm. and uh, we worked in conjunction together. There was other mechanics too. Where I had the mechanic experience and the tool making experience, we all worked together, and um, I worked with this Roger Duquette from Montreal, because he worked on the first prototype in Montreal, which was certified. And uh, finally, we came, he came into uh, New Bedford with Bernard Snitzer. Now, Bernard Snitzer was quite a genius. He was quite a ma top man. He was from uh, Warsaw, Poland. And uh, I always respected that man. Are they using it? it you, did, you did successfully complete the, the, the prototype. Oh, correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. I mean, it, was, it, it didn't fail or... No, it didn't fail at all. It passed the certification. We had put on the Franklin engines, mm -hmm. and that was not enough. So we converted over to Lycoming engines, supercharged Lycoming engines. And uh, the purpose of this helicopter was, it was vibration-free, four blades, the first twin-engine helicopter in the world. It was done right here in New Bedford? Right here in New Bedford, here, and here's a... Clipping right here where we had a test run, working 24 hours a day. We had different crews. I had the day crew, I had a night crew, and we had all different test pilots to, uh, to see how we could stand up. And after the 200 hours of uh, testing on the ground, it had to be dismantled again and measured. All the parts had to be measured. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it was very uh, precise. Well, I guess you might say you were in on the ground floor of the modern aircraft as we know it today. You've got some other points that are very interesting, too. I know for a fact that you built, uh, you lived in a tenement house in the north end of New Bedford, and, and you built a couple of uh, kayaks or boats. And I built three kayaks. In, but in, in, in the attic of the... I built 16-foot kayaks in the attic. In the attic. How did you get them out? The attic at that time, I put them through the skylight window. And, and lower them up. Lower them down with a clothesline rope. This sounds like a joke. 
No, it wasn't a joke. And, and uh, I understand you built a, a sailboat that later a doctor purchased from you, and you had uh, to get to sail that boat, didn't you? Well, there, there was quite a story on that. Uh, that year, I built a boat during the wintertime, and um, the roof wasn't too stable. It was a big attic. You mean you built a boat in the attic? In the, in the attic, yes. How big was this boat? The boat was 18 by 7 feet wide. In the attic? And uh, <laughs> the mast was 28 feet high. Well, I know you didn't build a mass in the no, house. No, the mass had to be... But it uh, sounds like some fellow painting himself in a corner. How did you get it out of the attic? Oh, uh, well, that's, uh, it was very easy. It was no problem at all. All I had to do was put it down the stairs and through the window. Be coming down four flights of stairs in a, in a, in a, in a north end tenement house, that's, that's well, crazy. Well, no, I, I used the skylight windows as an anchoring point. See, there was four skylight windows there. Mm -hmm. So I put one rope out one window and I put a rope out the other end and I just went over to the window where I wanted to come out, out of the window. It's amazing. And I put a block and tackle there, and I just let it go out in midair. I understand you flew model planes. You built, you built model planes and flew them. I mean, good sized model planes. I don't mean just those little small ones. Oh, yes. Uh, when I was up in uh, Maine, I had a model club there. And uh, the government gave me all the material to work with. And now, I, now you're coming into focus, I think, where everyone realizes that uh, you should, have, you should by now, anyway, that. Uh, you did build these car rebuild the carriages at Fort Phoenix, and you did a lot of work at Fort Phoenix yourself. Is that correct? Oh yes, I did. Yeah. And, I, and I know for a fact, and I think we should say that at this time, that uh, not only did he build them, he made all the tools and the bits and the and, and the wrenches to go with these very heavy carriages, six tons apiece. And uh, he's got to be credited with with, with doing um, you know all that work and and uh, writing to Washington and getting the plans and reconstructing that. I organized the, the alumni, mm -hmm. the Civilian Conservation Alumni. And uh, this is the There's a bumper sticker. Bumper sticker here. Uh -huh. It lives again. It does live again. You get much of a response from the old timers? I, I say old timers, but uh, oh, obviously yes. you're not young boys anymore. Well, there were about two million left now because uh, out of four million, a lot of them went into the service. A lot of them returned. I know a lot of the fellows, you know, in the local area that served in the CCCs. And, and they're all, you know, good craftsmen, the artisans. And that's something that, you know, we're not looking at. Everybody wants to go to college and be an engineer. We're losing sight, and there's nothing wrong with education. I don't mean to say that at all. But I do know that you have to have the working force with your hands, the people that can run this, this equipment, and, and, you know, common sense. Uh, you know, sometimes you wish you had that kind of influence back. Well, well it, when it, I was in the CCs, while I was in the CCs, I did model building there. Also, I did photography work. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way I also did flying, because I enjoyed it. I understand you still fly. Yeah, I still do, yes. Uh, the, the chipmunk, I think we got a picture. Oh, of picture. you mean this one here, the yes. Uh, I fly it's a with Havilland, a, is it? This here is a Diavlin chipmunk. It's a Canadian built, mm -hmm. World War II. I think World War II, the Havilands were But this is a 1956 the model. Mm -hmm. And uh, this oh, is yeah. called a super chipmunk. Yeah, I can see you in the front, uh, in the cockpit, in the front. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, this was bought up in Sugarbush, Vermont. And it was quite an experience in Sugarbush, Vermont. Let me ask you a question. How old are you now? I am 67. You're 67. You're, you're still in there, and you're certainly... Uh, I, I wish we could talk all night long, but I know the, uh, uh, the clock is running down on us, and we're going to have to close the program now. But it's certainly there are so many questions I would like to ask uh, Woody here. But I know that he's had a full and rather uh, uh, certainly... Uh, a good taste of life, uh, I guess it owes you nothing. You've enjoyed yourself, I know that for a fact. You've been all over the country and uh, probably experienced a lot more than most of us. So, uh, other than to say thank you very much for coming tonight, I hope that in the not too distant future we could probably pick up and, and get in, into the, uh, the, the nuts and bolts of, of your life a little bit more and some of your very, very good experiences uh, and certainly should be example for a lot of young men today. Well, thank you very much uh, to Cable 2, uh, and the, I hope you enjoyed this segment of the Fairhaven and Cushioning Magazine. And I want to thank our guest, uh, Arthur Woody Fortier of New Bedford, in sharing some parts of his life.